Hi guys, Mr. Pulley here looking at uh, world cultures and our first of two units on the Middle East. I'm uh, going to look at chapters 25 and 26, the geography, early history, and heritage of the Middle East. Big picture here, we're going to look at chapter 25, which looks at basically that geography and early history. And then we're going to look at chapter 26, which looks at um, the heritage, including Islam, which is a major factor in that area today. Starting with chapter 25, the Middle East is a strategic location, and it's strategic because of its location. Now, there's some problems in the Middle East when we think of things like scarcity of water, and yes, there is. It's a dry, barren place in a lot of areas. Because of that, it leads to a very scattered population, and it's scattered because we're going to cluster around where the water is going to be. Now, there are some areas with abundant water and resources, including the Fertile Crescent region, and that's the Tigris <coughs> and Euphrates rivers, and of course, there's lots and lots of resources there. Now, because of those resources, and not just water, where you can grow crops and things in the Fertile Crescent, there's also mineral resources there as well in terms of iron, copper, and other things. This is going to have people migrating there to get at those resources. And because they're migrating, they're going to bring in their culture, which leads to cultural diversity. It's also an intersection of trade between Europe and Asia. This is strategically important in our order to control the region. And looking at that trade, here is our Silk Road trade, bringing uh, silk and other jade items, uh, ceramics and things, to uh, the Middle East. Long routes through here by land, also by sea, all having to come through the Middle East to get to their final destinations, in most cases, in Western Europe. Okay, culture and empires in Chapter 25 here. We're going to look at the ancient Sumerians in Sumer. Okay, that's where Gilgamesh was from. These guys introduced things like agriculture uh, in the Fertile Crescent, metalworking because they've got those resources in terms of iron and uh, uh, copper first, then bronze, then iron later. They're also going to invent writing and the ideas of cuneiform, which they pass on to later cultures. The things that they invent, these get passed on to later cultures. That's why they are important. Okay. Speaking of cultural spread and cultural ideas, we're going to get Hellenistic culture. Well, Hellenistic culture is when Alexander the Great from Macedonia takes over the Greeks, takes the Greek ideas and their culture, and conquers the Middle East, and in doing so, spreads their ideas. That blending of Greek cultures and Middle Eastern cultures becomes Hellenistic culture. That's an example of cultural diffusion. Okay. Let's see the size of this empire of Alexander, one of the largest empires in the world had known at that time, all accomplished by the time he was 32 years of age, and then he died and he fell apart. Okay, the Roman Empire in chapter 25 is also important. This is a vast, huge empire, bigger than Alexander's empire, in fact. Uh, but it lasts much longer because they have great security from the Roman legions, and they also build roads. The roads are important because they help move the troops around, and that provides that security and stability. But those roads also make it easier to conduct trade. If it's secure, I'm more likely to trade. If it's easier, I'm more likely to trade. So those things both work out. This leads to an exchange of goods and ideas throughout the world, from Western Europe through the Middle East, all the way through North Africa. Again, examples of cultural profusion. How big is their empire? Huge, vast, all of Europe. The roads are very important, not just the sea routes in the Mediterranean Sea, but also these land routes, and the idea was that all roads led to Rome. And in fact, this is so efficient, these guys could move a letter from in Rome to the border up here in Scotland in about seven days. And I'm talking about just an ordinary, hey, how things going kind of letter. This is important. This idea is so great as copulated by European leaders to help move their armies around and also by people who then defeat those armies, bring those ideas back home and build roads as well. I'm talking about Hitler in Germany and his Autobahn system and Dwight D. Eisenhower becoming president and building the Eisenhower interstate system in the United States. Chapter 25, looking at religions in chapter 25, that's Judaism and Christianity. Now, Judaism is very important because it teaches us that people, people are responsible for the choices. It's not that gods choose whether you're going to be killed or live or die. It's people are responsible for the choices for making good or evil. That's their choices, not the gods' job. Okay. They also impact later religions. Okay. Their ideas will... Uh, 
belief in God and your choice in, impact Christianity and Islamic beliefs as well, as well as their belief in monotheism, belief in one God instead of many gods. Christianity itself has a great appeal beyond Judaism because we're not talking about ideas of following these rituals and things to uh, give, uh, reach salvation, but the idea that anyone, if they believe, can reach salvation. And that becomes an important uh, concept and a great appeal to people, especially in the fall of the Roman Empire, when the Greek and Roman gods don't seem to be cutting it. And here's a simple message of God loves you, follow these things, and you can reach salvation. Chapter 26, we're going to look now, however, at the predominant religion nowadays in the uh, Middle East, and that is, of course, Islam. This is a religion that begins in the 600s AD. Uh, this, uh, this promotes the equality of all believers, uh, including women. Women, by uh, the Quran, were given social and spiritual equality with men. That doesn't last. We'll talk about that in just a second. It changes to women having to be modest. Modest changes into being covered all the time in public and having to obey their father and or husband. Now the Hijra in Islam is a turning point. The Hijra was when Muhammad was kicked out of Mecca because he's saying all your fake idols here are fakes. Uh, they throw him out. He goes to Medina, gathers more uh, believers, gathers an army, comes back to Mecca. They surrender to him without much of a fight at all. This is important because the Hijra is the turning point because it leads to the expansion, the spread of Islam. Okay. Remember, Islam will eventually take over the Middle East, including the Holy Lands in Jerusalem. Uh, this is going to make the Christians in Europe mad, and they will eventually try to send crusade after crusade after crusade down there to take them back. The first one successful, the next one not so good, the third one even worse, and the fourth one, it was a complete, complete disaster. Important thing to remember, however, about religion. Religion has an influence on culture, but of course, culture then influences religion. And our example we gave in class is the idea that the religion gave women equality, the culture took it back away. Cultures and empires in 26, <clears throat> the Ottomans, they are important. This is in modern day Turkey and their empire uh, spreads it to the time to include parts of what is today Iraq and Iran. Uh, they had tolerance, they had these millets, these communities of non-Muslims, they let them practice their own religion. If you keep them happy by not trying to impose your religion on them, the idea was they would stay happy and not try and revolt. Okay, These guys had their own governments, their own religious beliefs, um, and then we're also going to see, however, a fight later on between the Ottomans and the Supervid empires. This is after Persia gets its independence and the Supervids are fighting. And what are they fighting over? Ah, what do we always fight over? Religion. In this case, they're both Muslim cultures, but Islam is split into two main groups, Shia and Sunni. The Sunnis are 90% of the population. The Shias or Shiites are 10% of the population. They're fighting over that. Speaking of fighting, farmers and nomads, they don't get along very well either because they're fighting over those scarce water resources. Uh, everyone's fighting about stuff. Okay. In the 1800s, we're going to see threats uh, to the Ottoman Empire, and those threats come in the form of not invasions, but internally. Well, one is actually sort of an outside thing, and that's the idea of imperialism. Now, imperialism is the idea of Europeans predominantly coming in and taking over other parts of the world and making them part of their country in the fact that we want raw sources for raw materials from you guys, and we want to sell you finished goods. It's a way you are important to us because we can make money off of you, and being money strengthens our national pride, strengthens our economy, and strengthens our military. Those ideas of pride in your country are nationalism. Now, if you're under imperial control and you want to have your own country, that's a form of nationalism as well. And after World War I, our Great War as it was called, uh, this was a war that we said we fought to make the world safe for democracy. Well, guess what? The Arabs aren't happy when it's over with because the Europeans maintain control of the Arab lands. In fact, they gain extra lands and territory in the Middle East. The British and the French uh, have control of large areas in North Africa and the Middle East as well, and they will work together to uh, build a canal connecting the uh, Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, that is the Suez Canal through the Gulf of Suez. Uh, and then finally in Turkey, uh, the Ottomans will be overthrown and Kemal Ataturk will take charge and he will modernize Europe more on a Western model, trying to blend Western ideas and Muslim ideas, uh, cultural diversity and cultural diffusion. 
what can you say? That's our quick and dirty chapters 25 and 26 in World Cultures, the Geography, History, uh, Early History, and Heritage of the Middle East. Thanks for watching.